On this week's episode, it's another edition of My Portugal. And I'm joined by Danny and Vanette, a couple from the US who found and bought a home here in Portugal, sight unseen. We discuss, amongst other things, the process of buying a house remotely. And after finally setting foot in Portugal, after buying the house, if it was everything they thought it would be. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal The Simple Life. And I'm delighted, delighted, delighted. Uh, it's it's so much fun. This is such an honor for me to be joined by clients and now friends. Uh, it's another edition of My Portugal. Uh, Daniel and, or Danny, sorry, Danny and Vinette. Uh, welcome and thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, it's great, Dylan. great to see you. Great to see you. Thank How you. are you guys? Are you missing Portugal? Yes. Big time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whenever we're away, we're missing it. Awesome. Okay. Um, Danny and Vinette, just give us a, a little bit of an introduction about the two of you. Uh, maybe D- Vinette, can you can go, you can go first. Okay. Um, my name is Vinette Weintraub. Um, I'm 62 years old. Uh, years young. Years young. Um, Danny and I, we work together for 27 years. I manage our law firm. Um, and um, I dabble in real estate investing. And Vinette's born in Jamaica. So she's uh, originally Jamaican. Yeah, I'm awesome. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny, and, tell uh, us about you. Sure. So um, Vinette and I have been married for 27 years. I'm a bankruptcy attorney, insolvency attorney in Los Angeles. Um, we've had our own firm together for 25, 26 years now. Um, two great kids, Sam, who's 25, and Shana, who is 22. Um, and I think those are the highlights. Yeah. Um, have a couple of hobbies. Um, primarily, first and foremost, I'm going to have to find some cigar smokers, some fellow cigar smokers and bourbon drinkers uh, in Portugal. Ah, great. I can help you with the cigar. I can help you with the cigars. I can't help you with the bourbon. Well, I like a bit of bourbon, but I'll turn you on to something else called aguardente. It's like a Portuguese version uh, of a of a good whiskey or or a brandy, actually. Uh-huh. Uh, it's oh. called aguardente, and it's very very good. So next time you're out here, we'll have to try. You have to give that a try. Uh, you won't have to twist my arm too hard. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, let's talk about you guys in Portugal. Um, and we're going to just go sort of through the journey that you guys have been on because it's a little bit different to most people, uh, but something that I, I think a lot of people are, have been going through because of COVID and and what's happened in the world. But just maybe start off telling us about your your relationship with Portugal. How did it start? Uh, take us to the to the beginning. So the beginning uh, really starts with Vanette and I have been thinking about where we wanted to retire for many years. So we've been doing research online research for probably 10 years. And of course, as everybody knows, who's dabbled in this, Portugal comes up in the top three, usually number one on every list from, you know, Forbes to sort of random websites. And there's a lot of reasons for that, which we can get into, but, you know, keeping to the question. So Vanette and I've been looking at this for quite a while. Um, we've also been looked, we looked at other countries and, um, investigated other countries. We thought about Costa Rica. We thought about Panama. We thought about Jamaica. Um, and then, um, we had a little pivot because we went for our anniversary in, uh, our, our 24th anniversary, we went to Spain and we were in Spain for three weeks and we fell in love with Madrid. I mean, we really just found it to be such a elegant, beautiful, friendly, interesting city. And, and we really started focusing in on, on Spain. And our plan was to get an apartment um, in a couple of different Spanish cities and see how we liked living in Spain. Um, and we, uh, we had a trip planned to, to Portugal and then COVID hit. So um, because, you know, Portugal was always on the radar. We always needed to to, to visit. We had never visited Portugal. Um, so COVID hits, we've all got a lot of time at home. What do we do? We're watching Netflix and we're on YouTube. And we, uh, we decided to do kind of online research about Portugal. Um, and we came across a, a really 
great website, which we've talked about, Dylan, in addition to yours, but there's also um, Our Rich Journey with um, Aman and Christina. And, um, you know, they've got a lot of really useful information and it's, it's not a travel log. It's much more factual. And they actually had a, um, a podcast comparing retirement in Spain versus retirement in Portugal. And they had spent time in both. Um, and uh, to our surprise, all of the, almost all the factors really favored Portugal. Um, and they had data to back up what they were saying. So um, Vanette and I really then started focusing um, much more on Portugal. Um, we learned about the Silver Coast from a friend, which we really didn't know of. Right. And then the Silver Coast led us to you. Um, and um, we, we began looking at properties with you online um, and uh, looking at different cities. And we, we fell in love with Sal Martino um, and a particular project that you showed us. Um, I remember you telling us, I remember having a conversation in which I said, Dylan, oh my God, this looks perfect. I think I actually may want to buy two properties up there. Um, hopefully one day we'll have grandkids and they'd come and stay for long periods of time. Um, and you said, Danny, I'm sorry, there's only one left. Um, and it wasn't the typical broker hard sell, like, no, there's really only there's because there really, really was only one left. And you said, if, if you really love this property, I think you guys have to move on it quickly. Um, and so we did. So we, we actually uh, bought a vacant lot um, and we're going to be building a house um, on a property that we had never seen in a country that we had never visited. So um, we have a guardian angel for sure, but we've also got really good instincts and we do our research and our homework <laughs> and we're you know, really, really lucky to meet you. Amazing. I mean, this is exciting because this is kind of how it all started. You know, this all started with us having a Zoom call. Uh, and, and now here you are talking about this journey. And the part that is uh, fascinating for me is the, 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 the fact that when you and when, we, when I met you, the two of you on the beachfront in San Martinio de Porto, it was the first time you had been to San Martinio de Porto uh, after buying a plot and uh, a house uh, in San Martinio de Porto. So that was like super exciting. But I mean, Vinette, just let's just jump back a bit because I want to get into sort of the, all the, the, you know, the process and, and how this all happened step by step. But what, what were some of the things for you that appealed to you about Portugal in your research and the things that you were looking at? What were those things that you thought, okay, this makes sense for us, for me, uh, for us as a family? Uh, for me, it was um, a big one was the medical. I have um, some medical history that requires great medical care and um, the research that Aman and um, Christina did really delve into the English speaking part of the medical system there and how great the medical system, both private and um, the, public the public system were. And so um, that was huge. Safety was also another factor um, for us. We, um, really have found that things are getting out of hand as far as safety is concerned in some of the cities where we reside and um, are not looking to be in that sort of uh, environment in our retirement. Um, and that's basically the, the ones that were at the top of the list. Yeah, because, because Portugal comes, it's ranked as like the third safest country in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I yeah. mean, for you, for you guys, I mean, um, besides the, the two things that you've sort of mentioned, Vinette, but um, what's happened in your lives um, that you've actually got to the point where, hey, we don't actually want a holiday home. This is not just a place to go to the sunshine, because that's kind of how it all starts for people is they think Spain, Southern Europe, sunshine. But this is deeper for uh, for you and, and and for what it represents for your family. It's it's a ho it's it's the next step in your lives. It's your next home. Uh, it's your next happy place. What's happened in your lives over there where you've got to the point of saying, "Hey, we don't want to be here, and we want to move to Portugal on the other end of the, of the of the Atlantic." 
Well, um, retirement, of course, is what we were thinking about and planning on for years. Um, cost of living, uh, safety, um, um, the beach property where we could have our family t- together, um, grandkids, hopefully. Um, those are the things that really we were looking for and we found it all there. Yeah, and people are so are, are just so friendly, right? We found that people, you know. Yeah, after so, we visited, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and the idea that we can travel Europe and, um, you know, it's, it's, everything is so close from California, it seems quite far. But, um, you know, Portugal is such a wonderful um, launching place to go all over Europe and, um, uh, and, and travel and visit new places. Yeah, quality of life, I'd say, quality of life. Okay, so you've you've got to the step where you're like, okay, um, time to move, time to change, time for for a new phase in our lives. Portugal's the one, thanks to what what, um, what are their names uh, from from Amon and Christina. Christina. <laughs> Say the names again. Amon and Christina. Amon and Christina. Amon and Christina. We need to give them a shout out from our rich journey because they're the reason you guys are here. So. Well, you know, metaphorically here, eventually here, they're the reason. So yeah. give, let's give them a shout out. But um, you've made that decision. Just take us through some of the steps now through um, what you did online, the kind of contacts, you know, how, how, how that all happened. And then what were those things that sort of grabbed you on the location and the property that you that you eventually bought? So, you know, we really like the fact that it's an hour from Lisbon, um, you know, from the big city, anytime we want to get, get down for a weekend to see a football match, to go to a museum, to catch opera, um, a concert, you know, Lisbon's right there. Um, and it's such a pleasant and easy drive. There's no traffic. We've done it. Yeah, you know, two or three. I, l- I love how you said football, not not soccer. I mean, you're already you're already fit, fitting right in there. It's amazing. I, I, I did that for you, um, and um, you know, so San Martino is um, it's just a lovely seaside village. Um, you know, it's not too small and it's not too big. I'll tell you the a little story when Vanette and I um, landed for the first time in Lisbon. And we were standing on the plane, um, getting ready to deplane. And I noticed that I had both a lot of excitement and a lot of anxiety because we had made this commitment and we, you know, we'd never been to the country. So I turned to Vinette and I said, so um, what are you feeling right now? Sorry, there's a helicopter going over. Overhead. So um, she said, um, you know, nervous and, anx- and, and really excited. So I said, you know what? I am. I am too. And, uh, and that's, you know, totally appropriate given what we were doing. We bought this property in a country we'd never seen. Um, from the time that we exited the terminal and met the first taxi driver and then drove to the hotel in Lisbon, we were like, wow, this is beautiful. We really made the right, the right choice. Um, and we, so we fell madly in love with Lisbon. Lisbon, we traveled a lot. Um, Lisbon's definitely our favorite city that we visited. Um, and then, so we spent three or four days in Lisbon and then we went to San Martino, Mm -hmm. which to me felt very small initially, like, oh my God, maybe we made a mistake. Maybe I need a big city. Vinette loved it. She's lived in, um, smaller towns in villages in in villages. So So I I said, just, yeah. So I said, well, just give me like 24 hours to kind of settle in. Um, because it's a big change for me. And after 24 hours, I realized this is paradise. So Awesome. We're going to get into your village and talk about your village. And, and I want to just sort of drill down on that, that, um, you know, that, that arriving to the town and to the plot and, and everything after doing so much of it online, doing so much research online, but um, just take people through the steps of, of um, how it all happened from the point of seeing the property to the first interactions, all those things that you did to the point of, of actually acquiring the, the property. I mean, you don't have to give us too many details, but just, you know, the general steps that you guys went through um, and how it, how it all played out for you and what was important for you along the way. Oh, it's a great question. You know, um, we, we sort of, you know, zooming out, we 
landed on Portugal as the place that we really wanted to investigate and probably retire to. The, the Silver Coast, particularly. Then, then, then yeah. we learned of the Silver Coast and started exploring towns on the Silver Coast online. And it's, right. it's really amazing what you can find online if you're willing to put in the time. You know, you can watch YouTubes about just about any city in Portugal or probably any city in the world and get lots of different perspectives. Um, and Sal Martino just looked like um, looked like the spot for us. Um, and so the next step was, OK, how do we explore properties and how do we find right. a realtor? And um, we found you in Portugal Realty and we actually started watching some of your uh Podcast. Podcast, because yeah. they bring, you know, um, a, a different flavor, a much deeper dive and perspective of um, life, culture, history, um, contemporary Portugal food, you know, all sorts of, you know, wonderful information on your podcast. Yeah. Um, and and the um, podcasts with the locals are really helpful to hear what people who have lived there, who've moved away and moved back and all of that and all the other expats and all of that. Um, those were really great. Yeah. Give us a sense of what it was all about. And, and then I think Dylan, when we, when we found the plot and we saw where it was and, you know, the view that it has and the, the proximity to the, to the town um, and the style of the house, frankly, we really loved the design. Um, it was really cool. Um, I think we were sold, you know, we were really sold. Um, and you know, the other thing obviously for Americans is cost, right? I mean, you can buy a, um, real estate prices in Los Angeles versus real estate prices in many places in the world are, you know, dramatically different. So, um, it's a, um, that's very, very attractive that you can, you can buy a house and not sort of have to break the bank. And that's wonderful. Yeah, I remember one of the one of the conversations that we had was was you were saying to me that a house like this in LA would be a lot, let's just say a lot more, a lot more expensive and and, and the the cost of this. And the I mean, I mean, I remember everything happened really, really quickly uh because it was kind of the last it was the last plot because um you loved it because the location made so much sense. Um, and just take us through those steps because we did everything remotely. You guys weren't here for any of this. We did all of this via phone right. calls, Zoom yeah. meetings, WhatsApps, reservations, etc. cetera. Uh, the lawyer, all of that happened. All of this happened remotely. So just take us through those, those, final, those final steps. And how was that experience for you? It was, well, it was a great experience. I must say that Dan handled most of that. So, um, we talked about it, but he was really the one dealing with all of the attorneys and everyone else to pull everything together. Yeah, I mean, so, one, of the, one of the brilliant and nice things about, you know, sort of your business model, Dylan, is it, it's kind of one-stop shopping. So, um, you know, it would be a challenge to hire a lawyer and an accountant um, in a country that you've never been to, right? Um, so um, Portugal Realty and Leisure Launch, that affiliation really brings so many resources to people like us under one roof. So you introduced us to Nuno and you, and, and you didn't push him. You said, Dan, if you don't like him, we'll find another attorney. And you introduced us to an accountant. You said the same thing. So, um, you know, that's really pleasant. At no time did it feel like a hard sell. And it always felt like the resources and the support that we needed to do this uh, was available. You guys do things differently in the legal perspective than we do. We don't have a retainer agreement with Nuno. You know, in, in California, you must have a written agreement with a client. So that was a little different, especially when we're wiring a substantial amount of money to his trust account. Again, not having met him and not having a written contract, you assure me that, Danny, this is the way it's done here and it's okay. And, and you've just been... Um, you know, the Sherpa of Sherpas to get us up the, uh, the, 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 the Everest uh, of buying a property. So we're really grateful to have met you. Yeah. And having everything under one umbrella, so to speak, was really helpful for us, you know, not having to go out and um, find a different people to handle certain things. Right. Um, I will come in, of course, into this. Dan took the first portion. And now that the house is being built, I will come in on that end with the design and the decoration and all of that. that will, that's where I 
Right. And we'll they, and they have all those resources and they have as well. All, and you have all those resources as well. Right. So awesome. it, was, it was just easy, Dylan. I just say mm-hmm. the, the, you know, the truth of the matter is it was easy and I, we can't stop talking about it, especially me to our friends. Um, you know, the, the, the only hard part about this is leaving good friends, right. That we have here. Well, sure. I'm trying to get, I'm family. trying to get as many of them to move overseas as, to Portugal as possible. And family because our, our, our kids are still here. So that's a tough part. Yeah. We're trying yeah. to get them to move as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've got a nice place for them to come and visit. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, Vinette, you, you mentioned, um, you know, we've gone through sort of the, 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 the boring stuff, you know, uh, the, the legalities and, 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 and transferring large sums of money and all of these things. Um, I mean, I have to reiterate, this was all done without you guys setting foot on the plot in the village. I mean, it was just uh, in the country. <laughs> in the country uh, incredible. Yeah. Danny, you'd been to the country only in the 80s the last time. And it was I, I was in Portugal in, in 1983. Okay. Uh, and I was there for, uh, you know, a, a short while, a few days in, in Lisbon. I don't even remember how many. And then, of course, as a 23-year-old kid down in the Algarve on the beaches and camping and living life. Yeah. But Amazing. That doesn't really count. The, everything's yeah. changed, yeah. including me, quite a bit since I was 23. Yeah. For, for you, I mean, let's, let's talk about the village. I mean, let's talk about, I mean, it's a beautiful home. Uh, the design is phenomenal. You've got the, the living area on the top to take advantage of the views of the valley and to the, and to the, to the ocean. We're not going to give the address out because we might have some stalkers on the, uh, listening to the podcast and we don't want them just rocking up to your house one evening or something, you know? So, but I mean, the village, San Martinio de Porto, as you guys know from the podcast, we love talking to people about their, their hometown, their terra, their, their, their village. San Martinio de Porto is your village. Uh, Vinette, you, you loved the fact that it had that village feel. So, you, you know, you, you had the village experience growing up in Jamaica, then to the big city in America, uh, right. and then now coming back to a seaside village. What were those things that appealed to you and that you loved about this, this location? Uh, I'll tell you, um, it was really relaxing. Mm. Um, I love the food. I love the people that we met. Um, everyone was very welcoming. Uh, it's just beautiful. It's um, sort of magical. Uh, the, you know, we're very, it's stress is a huge word that we use here all the time. It just melts away when you're there. It literally melts away. So just walking or eating the wine is amazing. I mean, just about everything that we've that we've experienced so far. Yeah, I I agree. And um, you know, the farmers market is right. really cool. So you had told us, Dylan, hey, they have a, a there's a farmers market. So in our experience, what that means is a series of sort of um, these almost like tents that are set up um, once or twice a week in, a, in an area in Southern California. And fresh produce is brought in. So that's kind of what we had in mind. But in San Martino, there's actually a building which is permanent and local farmers bring in their produce and the fishermen are bringing in fish. Um, and it's just, wow, that's really, really cool. The thought that you can just walk, you know, a short while uh, from, from your home and pop in and grab some things to, to cook for dinner, um, you know, put together a salad, the fruit is amazing i haven't had blueberries that tasted like that since i was a kid that i I just can't remember blueberries really tasting like blueberries um and the weather the weather is amazing and the fact that so many people speak english yeah um was a big draw for us as well the farmer's market thing was important for you because i remember you you said you love to cook uh, and yeah. where are we going to get our ingredients from? And I said, oh, no, you're good. You're good in Portugal. That'll be fine. Uh, so it's it's awesome. I mean, I'm just picturing you guys in that kitchen of yours with that view out to the to the to the ocean, having cooking some some food bought from the from the local farmers market. That'll be amazing. Uh, we we are yeah, too. What a we're fantasy! Looking forward to that, and barbecuing, and our pizza oven, and all of that in the backyard. Right. So you're going to have to teach us, Dylan, how to yeah. have a, a, pro- a proper Portuguese barbecue. 
Easy, easy. It's it's not if if I can do it, anybody can. <laughs> If I can do it, anybody can. I mean, let's talk about that experience um, that we, you know, we've mentioned it a couple of times. But just say, sort of take us through that that moment that you were he- that you finally got here. Um, you've done all of this research. You've you you own a plot um, already. Uh, you've done how many emails, how many phone calls, how many Zoom calls back and forth, and now you're arriving to Portugal as a homeowner. Um, what was that feeling like for 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 you? First of all, Vinette getting arriving in San Martín de Porto and it, seeing it on the ground in person. Uh, describe that to us. You know, I, I don't know what the best word to use. It was just. It felt like home. It was just. It felt like home. It was comfortable. It was wonderful. Um, it was. Um, inviting. I, I'm at a loss for words. Everything just, it just fits. It really fits. Yeah. And standing on, um, standing on, you know, your plot, your sort of piece of dirt on the other side of the world was just a, a, a really great feeling. It's like, wow, we own this and we're building a home here and we're building a life here. It's, um, it's exciting and you know everything about it feels pretty easy. I, I have to say that learning Portuguese, not so easy. Okay. Um, but as Vinette said, um, really everyone speaks English. And in fact, we've met many Portuguese who use uh, American sort of idioms. Um, you know, so um, it's, uh, it, it, it's very, very easy to, to, to make this transition to, and, um, yeah, to assimilate. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. And we can, we just can't wait till the home's completed and we can, um, you know, move over. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, me too. Me too. Um, D- D- Danny, the, the, um, for, for you, um, having done, I mean, Vinette already has spoken about how you did a lot of sort of the legwork at the beginning um, and, and making all of this happen from a, you know, so logistics point of view and the legal perspective. How did it compare, um, you know, seeing all of these things, looking at plans, looking at pictures, looking at photos, looking at drone images, uh, and then finally sort of standing there. I know you mentioned the first time you, you, you kind of were a bit nervous because you thought it might be a bit small, but after, you know, after you'd spent some time, but how um, was that? How would you say, did the expectation, did it match and meet your expectations? So that's a great question. Vinette and I, as I said, we've done, we did a lot of research. We, we really, really did. We did a, a deep dive into Portugal. And as Vinette set up, the, the medical system, the education system, um, you know, we could go through a whole bunch of factors. I would say Portugal is the only place that I've visited that exceeded expectations other than Japan, which is just a very, very different experience, you know, because it's just such a foreign culture. And, and, and Japan almost, you don't really have expectations because it's so foreign, but it was an amazing trip. But of all the places that we visited, you know, you always have expectations. You always do research. You get a sense of what you're going to see and what you're going to do. And um, man, everything about Portugal just exceeded expectations. The people were actually friendlier than one can describe. Vinette lost yeah. her wallet the first night that we were in Lisbon. The cab driver, I remember that. Yes, driver drove it back to the hotel where he picked us up. Now you and know, waited. and waited, and wouldn't give it to the hotel. And you know, I kind of thought initially, okay, so he's going to want a tip or some kind of thing for bringing the. He wouldn't take any money, and everything was in her wallet. Like that just is amazing. And there's, we could give you a ton of examples. In that regard, people are so easy to talk to and so forth, coming with information and helpful and helpful. So, um, yeah, um, we feel very, very lucky. Amazing. Vinette, what are you what are you most excited about for your next for your new life in, in Portugal? What are you looking forward to doing and, and well, making I'm happen? I'm looking forward to designing the home, um, picking out all the pieces and you know, all the finishes, all the finishes and all of that. So I'm looking forward to that. That's exciting for me. And then the process of moving in. And what, any any thoughts about after we're there? After we're there, um, seeing the country, Mm. 
seeing the rest of Portugal, um, visiting all the different. We went to Nazareth. 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 Nazare. Yeah. And um, love that. So we haven't been around very much. So we've spent some time in San Martino, but we want to. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of Portugal. We spent time in Lisbon and Nazare and San Martino. I want to see more of Portugal. Yeah, and awesome. we've, got, we've got some ideas maybe about um, a new business we're going to start, Dylan. We'll talk to you about that maybe later. Okay. Um, and, um, and I, you know, on your podcast, you introduced um, Tim Vieira. Tim Vieira, yeah, yeah. With Brave Generation Academy. And um, I've kind of, you know, through your podcast, I've connected with him and I'm looking forward to maybe helping out, volunteering, maybe teaching um, in any, you know, in, in any way that I can. So it's, mm. Vinette and I are retiring young and we've got a lot of energy. So we're going to find uh, stuff to do and get really um, integrated into the community, I think. Tim's, Tim's opened up a, um, a Brave Generation Academy not far from, from where your house is uh, in Kaldish. Mm-hmm. Just off the main fruit market in Kaldish, he's opened an academy there. And he's also just opened, he's just about to open one in Abidos as well. So okay. there's going to be two academies nearby to, to you. So that could work out perfectly in the end. Uh, that's it. amazing. Can you remember what we ate on the beach the first time we met each other? In person, you guys had sea. You guys had sea bass, right? You and Dylan shared some sea yeah, bass. Yeah, we shared sea bass. Um, um, and then we went to the desserts. The little pastel, pastel, yeah. pastel donata. Pastel donata. Yeah. yeah, can't get enough pastel. Portuguese pastries, best kept secret, I think, in the world. I don't know why the French and the Italians get so much credit for their pastries because Portuguese pastries, to me, just take the cake. How many did you have? How many did you have? Just, you know, just give us a ballpark figure. How many did you have while you were here? I I, I think my lawyer has advised me not to answer that question. (laughs) (laughs) Plenty. Yeah, they're just delicious. And it's great to have them in different, um, you know, bakeries because they're actually you know, sort of slightly different. I'm going to have to find my favorite pastel. You've got a good bakery up there in town. So uh, up by the, in the old, in the old town, I don't know if you went to that one where they bake them all fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Near, near where the chicken place is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for people thinking about doing this, for people thinking about taking the leap for people thinking about uh, is, you know, is it possible? Is it doable? Uh, to move to, you know, never mind Portugal, but to another country. You know, of course, we, we're talking about Portugal here. What would you say to to people who have that question and who want that change, and who had a similar stage to to you guys? I, they should absolutely look into it. I would say, definitely, it's yeah. worth. Yeah, I mean, I I um I think it's a, a daunting prospect to move. In, in some ways to move to a different country with a different culture. Um, you know, Western Europe is not so different from America in a lot of ways. So for Americans, I'm speaking specifically to it's uh, I think it's uh, relatively easy. Um, you know, it's really kind of a question of what you want, you know, um, and um, it's uh, it's significantly less expensive, which is obviously attractive when you're no longer working and really making uh, money. Um, the, the, as we've talked about the, the ability to communicate with people is it's just, it's seamless. Everybody speaks English, um, and everybody's helpful and, um, and we're eager to try to learn to speak Portuguese. So we're going to definitely make that effort. Um, I think people should look into it. If you're, you know, if you're thinking, if you're frankly, if you're young, if you, if you're in your, I don't know, you've got young kids, um, visit. I would think about visiting and yes. maybe thinking about moving to Portugal because the education's great. The p- public uh, health and private health systems Education are great. Education is great. And, um, you know, it's where, where do you want to make your life? And there's a lot of things about America that are tough uh, now and, you know, acrimony politically and so forth. And there's just none of that in Portugal. It's so, it's so peaceful. I'm, I'm sure there's you know, you have your own political issues, but it, it's everybody seems so much more on the same page in mm-hmm. terms of responding to COVID, as an example. Um, yeah. there, 
Yeah. So it's, um, I would encourage people to look into it. Not too many people and no one to look into Sal Martino. By the way. Yeah. This, this conversation never happened. Um, you've mentioned it a couple of times feeling so welcome. And, you know, you spoke about the story with the taxi driver and, 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 you know, for, for you guys always feeling like you could walk into any place and, and feel welcome and, 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 and that people were happy that you were here. Um, was that, would you say that that was something that surprised you the most about, about Portugal was how the people, I think that, and that's probably one of the most pleasant things and the things that make you feel so, so home, it comes up a lot in conversations, but would you say that was one of the things that surprised you the most was the people and, and the warmth and, and the welcoming nature of, of the Portuguese people? Absolutely. Definitely. Waitresses, um, you can ask anyone any questions. They're helpful. They'll tell you anything you want to know about the country or the city or the village or where there's the, uh, the younger waitresses, where they're studying, what they plan to do, how much they love their village or their, the country in general. Um, yeah, definitely. The people are amazing. Yeah, so, so much so that since I've come home, I've um, Vanette and I've talked about, and I've talked to my friends about, and my and our son Sam, who's really um, kind of a history buff. Like, why is it that the Portuguese people are so friendly? This doesn't happen by accident. Um, and Sam came with us on one of our trips, and uh, and just loved it. Um, and you know, I think it has something to do with P- Portuguese history, with exploring, um, and uh, going out into the world and coming back with, you know, new experiences. I think the, you know, the immigration from Africa, I mean, Portuguese, Portugal is a very, it is the most um, diverse place that we've visited. It's more diverse than Los Angeles. Um, It's not, there's no sense of segregation, right? That it's not like groups hanging out with groups. It's very, very, um, um, very, very welcoming sort of in all respects in that way. And so um, it, it's interesting. It's an interesting question why Portuguese people are the way that they are, because it's true. It's not a myth or just something that people say. It's real. Um, it's so funny. I mean, you you, you know, you, you guys watch the podcast and it's when you ask Portuguese people why, they don't actually know how to answer the question because it's just part of the dna it's it's really really they don't know how to answer the question that you know they've got the guesses and there's the historical pointers but it's for them it's just how they are and it's it's part of the culture and i'm glad that you guys have had the chance to experience that firsthand so and and you will more even more as you go along so that's exciting right we you know we we check into our hotel and the woman behind the desk in in uh, lisbon spent at least 10 minutes talking to us you know, and it was just wonderful. She was, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? And we're having this really warm, like we've known each other our whole lives conversation. And I found that that's really great, except when you're the second person online. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. Or the third. Or the third. <laughs> it's a problem. It's a problem. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Another thing is for me with Portugal, um, I, you know, I'm Jamaican and um, we eat a lot of salted codfish. And I found out that that's huge in Portugal. So it's the fish, you know, it's, different. yeah, it's the fish. It's the so it's perfect. Prepared there. Yeah. It's one of, one of our main dishes that we do in Jamaica is the salted codfish um, with ackee, which is our national fruit. And so um, I'm ready to try all the different dishes there in Portugal. We have more than 350 dishes, apparently. And apparently there's a different bacalhau <laughs> dish for every day of the year. Yeah. Wow. I have to pronounce it bacala, right? Bacala. Bacala. Awesome. I've loved I've loved reminiscing and I've loved um uh, remembering how this all unfolded and 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 how this happened for you guys and I'm looking forward to seeing you again in Portugal. Um but before we go one thing that you that you want people to remember and take away from our conversation. Vinette first. <laughs> Ladies first. Remember from um about Portugal? Portugal is magical simply magical yeah and i would say i was going in the same direction it is still paradise um and um i hope it remains that way forever because it's just lovely wonderful um just what what resource i mean what what online resource and 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 uh and 
you know, um, places, sites, channels that you would send people to who, who want to start this journey and find out more about Portugal? So certainly your podcast, Portugal, The Simple Life, um, for sure. Um, and our rich journey, I think, are two are two uh, very good places to start. Another one is we saw an episode of Somebody Please Feed Phil um, on Lisbon. It was amazing. So it's a so- show. It's a show on Netflix called Will Somebody Please Feed Phil? And Phil Rosenthal, I think, is his last name, is a comedian, and he travels to all these different uh, different cities and taste their food and he interacts with the public. So he did one on Lisbon. Um, oh, awesome. and we visited yeah. several of the restaurants. They the were all great. They were all great. And that was fun. That yeah. was fun for yeah, us. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. that gives you a little taste of. Yeah, and, and, and I think that the governmental sites are also pretty good. You, if you want to get educated on what the various visa programs are and tax programs are, there's lots of uh, good material available. There are Facebook groups for expats. Um, which are very, very easy to find. Um, Americans living in Portugal, expats in Portugal, right. um, and lots of really good information there. And, you know, one of the things we didn't touch on is how the government has really made it very easy for um, foreigners to relocate to Portugal. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Amazing. Okay. Last question, Danny and Vinet. Um, and that is a question we ask all of our guests to do the My Portugal series. Uh, Danny and Vinette, what makes this Portugal your Portugal? Vinette, you can go, you can go first. The people. The people. That's really important to me. Feeling welcome, feeling a part of. So the welcoming, wonderful people of Portugal. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. Um, and for me, I'm looking to the peace and serenity, quiet, calm, and slower pace. You know, I think Portuguese people, at least compared to Americans, have different priorities. I think the priorities of family and friends um, is, is the right priority. Um, so many of us here in America are just working constantly and uh, and don't, I think Vinette and I don't do this, but a lot of folks really don't make it a priority. But in Portugal, everybody seems to make it, to have that priority, friends and family first. And then uh, work, yeah. work is in there as well, but friends and family count most. The way of life, yeah. The way of life. Awesome. I've loved this conversation. Thank you for being on the podcast. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome, Dylan. It's been great. Look forward to seeing you in person again. We're coming, I think, in March. Something, February, something March, around something there, February, like March. I'll be around. I'll well, be here. Bacalhau, bacalhau is on the menu. Yeah. Bacalhau, bacalhau. bacalhau. And, and we're, you have to try the aguardente. You have to try the aguardente, the, the, the brandy. I'm ready wow. and I'll bring you a cigar. Awesome. Okay. Guys, thank you so much. And for now, I'm going to let you call it. It's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> so thank you once again to Danny and Vinette. And thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe. Share with your friends, give us a thumbs up, and please leave a comment or a review. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll be back next week with a brand new episode. As we say in Portugal, Cesar's bem-vindo. Welcome to The Simple Life.